This is the DJI Spark Com DJI Spark Fly Combo Fly More Combo Pack. This is the official DJI Spark. I did do an earlier video about the Spark, but that was with the prototype unit. This is the official shippable unit as it will appear in stores. Biggest detail here in this box is the controller for the Spark. Now for this video, I'm going to be comparing the Spark with the controller to the DJI Mavic with controller. I do want to make it abundantly clear before I begin this review that I'm not being paid by DJI. I've never been paid by DJI. This is an impartial review, but I am a huge fan of DJI, so it's, it's sort of like a, a little bit biased because I like their product so much. First, the unboxing. Documentation. This is the actual drone, battery, extra propellers there. Controller, propeller guard, charger, AC adapter for charger. That's everything. The bag, you get the case, you get the drone itself. Eight, I think, eight propeller blades, four propeller guards. You get the charger and you get two batteries and I think it maybe even comes with an SD card. This is 699 bucks. Seems like a good deal. Now one interesting tidbit I did want to zero in on because this thing's all about portability is this is the case it comes with. This is the case you need for the batteries, for the charger, for the controller, for everything. This is the case that the Mavic comes in. Now the Mavic is a considerably bigger drone than the Spark, but at the end of the day you need all this stuff with you so you're carrying it all in the case. Mavic case, Spark case. They're almost the same size. So you're going to take up almost the same amount of real estate in your backpack. That's an interesting consideration. Okay, let's get into this. <laughs> this is the controller for the DJI Spark. And this is the controller for the Mavic. Both extremely similar looking devices. I will say this one feels, the uh, Spark one feels a little bit lighter and like maybe a little bit cheaper feeling. And the Spark does not have this LED readout that the Mavic controller does have. Now, without having actually used this yet, I can tell you the LED readout is not super critical. See, because you always use these controllers with the phone, the information presented on this LED readout is redundant to the phone, not entirely necessary. I think they put it on the Mavic because they intended for people to use the controller without a phone, but who wants to, you can't see the picture. The layout's the same, buttons are the same. Uh, got these great little X-Wing fighter arms here, and that's where you stick, and that's where you stick the phone. I do want to say, as a very strong aside, DJI made a lot of fuss about the fact that you can control these and they're fully operational using just a phone. And you can also use hand controls, things like that. I think that's great, whatever. It feels a little bit like a gimmick to me. I want to use a drone to take beautiful aerial cinematography, whether it's a tiny drone or a big drone. And when you just have a phone, you're trying to use essentially buttons that have this kind of tactile feedback. You're trying to emulate that using nothing but a touch screen. It's precise on top of it being harder to control because of the lack of buttons and this is a really big deal when you're using your phone it's nothing more than the Wi-Fi signal from your phone so the range is severely limited every time I use the spark using just my phone it was never able to get more than really like 70 or 80 feet away from me now in the box here are these propeller guards they attach on something like this Propeller guards are really great for two things. That's if you're a total novice, a total beginner, they will protect your drone. And two, if you're flying indoors in really tight quarters, they'll also be helpful there. They're not really for me though. For the actual flight test, I'm gonna go outside to a more open, safe location, but. Now, I've had this Spark prototype for a few months. One aspect of the Spark that's sort of hard to capture in a review like this is how quiet and discreet it is. Even the Mavic, when you fire that thing up, it does the boop, 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 and it attracts a crowd, and then it goes, and it's loud. But the Spark is quiet and small and somewhat innocuous. People see it as a toy instead of a, a my single favorite feature of the Spark, and this may seem silly, but this is a big deal for me, is the fact that you can just plug a micro USB cable into the Spark itself and charge the battery. Portable battery charger, plug it in, this thing's charging right now. That's a big deal. It can be charging in my backpack. All right, so this is me setting up the controller for the DJI Spark for the first time. You have to go into your phone and like literally 
connect to the Wi-Fi. It doesn't say the password. It's just I don't know the password to the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi password is located under the sticker. Okay, I think I've got it. Just so you know, that took me 20 minutes to figure out. That whole setup process was confusing and frustrating and took a long time, but I'm hoping maybe that's just because it was the first time that I did it. Now it is time for the long-awaited flight test. Now what I'm gonna try and do is do some complicated but beautiful cinematography with the drone, and then try to replicate that cinematography with the Mavic, compare the two shot. It's so cute. This looks really good. All right, I do have to say responsive, responsiveness feels fantastic. Uh, the image preview quality that you get on the screen right here is dynamite. My complaints about radio versus Wi-Fi are unfounded. It's really, really good, and the drone is way the hell out there. One of the biggest technical hurdles of the Spark versus the Phantom or any of the other DJI drones is that this only shoots in 1080. That's the highest resolution. The Mavic is shooting natively in 4K. Now, if you're watching this back on a cell phone, you might not be able to tell, but if you watch it back in 4K on a big monitor, you'll be able to see the difference, and it's, it's significant. Okay, despite all my bitching about that Wi-Fi nonsense, that was pretty incredible. I took it way further than I'd expected. The image quality on this thing was amazing, and uh All right, so in conclusion, biggest concerns with this were around it's like flyability. How easy is it to control in the air? Because on the phone, it kind of sucks. Using the controller, it's perfect. It's ace, it's everything I wanted. It's incredible. Controls are tight, they're, they're specific, it's responsive, it does exactly what you want it to do. It just kind of leaves one big question, which is the million dollar or $300 question, which is for $6.99 for the whole package, do you get this? Or for $9.99, do you get the whole package of the Mavic? And I think it's, if you're a novice, if you're new to drones, this is the way to go. Save the money and this thing's amazing. If, if you've had any experience or you have bigger aspirations for what you can do with the drone, spend the extra money, get the Mavic, you won't have any regrets. Both though are great options for drones and I will never stop being impressed at just how tiny this thing is.